All right, thank you. Um, I saw, at least from my screen, a bunch of people um, doing the, the music. So um, good way to start out, get a little energy built. Um, I'm going to switch over um, to my PowerPoint screen now. For this first part of things. So, So our invitation this year is, is from Jesus to come follow me. And um, we wanted to take a look back at where we've been so far this year. Uh, because we've, we've covered a lot of ground in, in the several weeks that we have um, been meeting. Um, we want to look at where we've been uh, by using the, the scripture readings that are read for Sunday Mass, but also from the liturgical year, just following the liturgical year. And Pope Francis has been with us um, along the way, um, guiding us and uh, keeping us company. Our, one of our first lessons, we talked about forgiveness. And we talked about how we're called to forgive and be forgiven. And that's, that's a huge lesson for us. Um, and we, we reviewed how, you know, God loves us so much. God forgives us for anything um, that we've, we've done wrong or think that we've done wrong, um, that God just accepts us and, and welcomes us in. Um, but the challenge for us as disciples is then that's what God expects us um, to learn how to do as well, that, that it's our job to learn how to forgive others. And, and that's what keeps it um, a lifetime challenge, okay? Because throughout our lives, we're going to meet people and run into situations where it's going to be hard for us to reconcile that, to forgive uh, things that happen. Um, but we're called right there in the Lord's Prayer to forgive others as God has forgiven us. And so um, it, it's one of those big lessons that we keep focusing on over and over. We talked about the importance of naming holy moments, um, that, that we need to watch for God, that we need to learn to see God's presence around us, uh, that that's not something that just comes naturally, but that it, we, we have to have our eyes open um, and learn how to see differently, okay? Not just in the way that people around us see. Um, and that it's so important for us to name those things and, and to, to call our attention to, to them. And so we made holy moment chains. And we're gonna be building on those in, in future things, but um, that whole idea of calling out the holy moments and learning to, to see and watch for God. Our next uh, lesson, we, we talked about sharing God's love. And we did it through letters to homebound people in our parish community. Um, I have to tell you that um, I got a couple of responses from people. We don't oftentimes get responses, but we got uh, some wonderful responses from, um, from folks who received um, the letters. And we're just thrilled that somebody out there um, wrote them a letter and, and cared about them. 
Um, I had one little old lady. Um, she's probably as old as my mom, but she's on Facebook. And so rather than sending me a note um, or telling me thank you, she did a Facebook post. Um, and I don't know if, if some of you saw, saw that, but you know, there was a Facebook post thanking the Generations of Faith program uh, for the letters that, that they wrote. Um, so just want you to realize that that outreach that we did made a difference for people. We also talked about how we belong to this, this wonderful communion of saints and that we're called to, to follow the examples of the saints. They're there as models for us, as guides for us, as helpers for us, um, always reminding us that we're part of this, this big family of God and um, encouraging us to, to continue to live uh, like disciples. Our last time we talked about um, Beatitudes and how God's blessings are mixed right into the fabric of life if we look for them, but they're not off, sometimes they're not um, put out there the way we think they are, okay? That, that even, you know, when we're mourning, um, God is blessing us. Even um, when we're persecuted, God is blessing us. Even when um, things aren't going our way, God is blessing us. And so um, it's a different awareness of life. And we, um, we took some of those Beatitudes and we um, put them in our Beatitudes book and we broke you into groups. Remember being in those groups? And we, um, we asked you to, to make uh, motions, gestures for each of those Beatitudes. So I just want to, um, to give you a minute, those of you that were in Beatitude number one with me, um, blessed are the poor in spirit. Reese, quick model our gesture. Do you remember our gesture? Nice. All right. Um, Beatitude number two. What was, what was the gesture in Beatitude number two? Okay, the crying. Okay. Good job, Terry. Um, Beatitude number four, that is Patty's group. What was our, our gesture for blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness? Where's Lizzie? Wasn't that yours? Well, you, you had your hunger, right? And, and, yeah. you, and you ate and you drank? Yeah? yeah. Okay. Um, Blessed are the pure in heart. I think the Vanden Hootens, where are, where are they? Where, they were our models at that time. Yeah, we had the, the hearts and the peace sign, right? Um, blessed are the peacemakers. What was that? We had the peace sign, yeah, but what, what else did we have in there? Oh, the handshake. Okay, that's right. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness. That, that was a more elaborate one. Yeah, there's the Kuhn family. Is there, they're modeling it. Okay, so and then we put those all together in a prayer. And um, so we're going to um, use the prayer that we did last time. And... I'm going to show you a recording of yourself as you pray along with this, okay? So as the gestures come, do them with the recording, and we'll use this as our, our opening prayer. So let's begin our prayer then in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Russ, Jenny, and Oh, sorry, I clicked when I shouldn't have. Reese, can you start us off? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Beatitude 
Number two. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Attitude number four. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Thank you. The attitude six. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Beatitude 7. <clears throat> um, blessed, are, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called people of God. Beatitude 8. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So let's begin our prayer. We don't want that. So let's begin our prayer then. In All right, so um, nothing that we've done so far expires, okay? Um, forgiveness, the call to learn how to forgive doesn't go away. Our need to learn to see holy moments, um, that doesn't go away. Reaching out to others, it's a continuous need. Remembering those who have gone before us, learning from the saints, living the Beatitudes, they're all part of our continuing journey. And so we continue that journey then um, by um, taking a look at this week's gospel and this week's homily and having a discussion about it. So that's what we're going to be doing now. Um, the Vanden Hootens are going to be um, leading us in the gospel reading. From there, we'll go right into Deacon Bob's homily. And then after that, we will um, divide you into groups, and we'll have leaders with you. And we'll talk about um, the, the reading and the, the homily. But as you're uh, preparing for this, um, just pay attention to um, what you might hear in the gospel or the homily that catches your attention. And we'll, we'll talk about that in our, in our small groups when we get there. So, um, Van and Hootens, whenever you are ready, um, I will move the slides along with you. Okay. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus told his disciples his parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one, he gave five talents. To another, two. To a third, one. To each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately, the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. I see how I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. 
here it is back. His master said to him in reply, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not then have put the money in the bank so that I, <clears throat> so that I could have it, have it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For everyone who has more will be given and will, be, will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be, will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside. When they, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The gospel of the Lord. Thank you. I don't know if you've noticed, but the world is kind of a mess. Have you noticed? No? We don't have to look very far. In our own country, you can look at what's happening in our political world with how divided our country is. With COVID, you can see the ever-increasing numbers of people being infected, people being hospitalized, people dying. And even in the church, just this week, the McCarrick Report was released. And it's a reminder of some terrible things that have happened and have been allowed to happen a lot longer than they should have. There's a lot of darkness in the world. That goes without saying. And I think I've told you before that when I realize this, I like to turn to the readings, especially the Sunday readings, to get a little guidance, a little inspiration, and a little wisdom. Now, to be honest, this week I spent way too much time on the internet, looking up all kinds of news articles and stories and opinion pieces, all kinds of stuff. Just wasted way too much time. But it was while I was doing that, I was reminded of two quotes that I had seen before, and that when I saw them this week, they really, really spoke to me. The first one is a quote from Abraham Lincoln, who apparently said, don't believe everything you read on the internet. And apparently he said it three years after he died. So <laughs> the other quote was attributed when I had seen it in the past to Nelson Mandela, who I think is one of the most inspirational figures, heroes really in the last few decades. I came to find out apparently he never said this. It was written by a spiritual author named Marion Williams. Williamson probably three decades ago and somehow it got attributed to Nelson Mandela. Either way, the quote stands. It says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond all measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. And it's not just in some of us. It's in everyone. In other words, what St. Paul wrote to the Thessalonians, we are children of the light. Every single one of us has a divine spark inside of us. And it's not for us. That spark is there to share 
with the world. It's not there to hide. Now we heard about hiding things in the gospel today. The servant who buried the talent. Now on the surface, it sounds like that story is about money. It's actually about a lot of money. A talent was something like 16 years worth of wages. It's a lot of money. And while that might seem to be the meaning of the story, the parable that Jesus is telling is about something much, much deeper. It's about a gift. It's about receiving a gift from God. And the parable challenges us this day in 2020 to think about what we're doing with the gifts we've been given. Now I look out and see a lot of people with an awful lot of gifts. And while we've all been given given different skills and abilities and gifts, there's one gift all of us have. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who really lived, who really died, who really rose from the dead, and who's really present right here in the words of the gospel. Who's present right here in all of us gathered here together as a community. And who in a few minutes will be really present on this altar in the Eucharist. Jesus Christ. The gift we've been given. That divine spark that's inside of us. We have it. We need to share it. And the way we go about sharing it is going to be a little bit different because we're all in different places. We're all of different ages at different stages in our lives. And we all have different abilities and talents, but there's something that's going to be similar about the way we go about sharing the gift of Jesus Christ. Our lives will start to look a lot like him and we will be people of love and mercy and justice and hope. But I know for me, too often, in my 46 years, I've hidden those gifts. I do. Sometimes it's hard to live this faith, to share the gifts God has given you with other people. Why? Why do we hide them? I think we're scared. Sometimes we're scared. Maybe somebody will laugh at us. Maybe somebody will reject us. Maybe we'll fail. But maybe, maybe we're afraid of success. Maybe we're afraid if we really lived this, that our life would change. And we don't know how our family and our friends would react to that. We don't know how our boss would react to that. So instead we hide it. We bury it and we sit back and say, I'm good enough. I'm comfortable. I got enough. I'm good. And let the words of Jesus Christ spoken throughout the gospels as he stands up and reminds us, no, you were made for greatness. Not greatness in the eyes of the world. Uh uh. Greatness in the eyes of God and in Jesus Christ. We were made to shine brightly, to bring the glory of God to bear in the world. And we were made to be saints, to be, become that who we were created to be. And here's the key to that. Sometimes we hear the stories of the saint and we think, saints, and we think, oh man, well, I'm never going to be able to do that. Uh-uh. It's the little things. It's not the grand, big, massive projects you have to do to follow Jesus. It's a kind word. It's a smile. It's a little sacrifice. It's a holy moment. Those little things add up. Those little things change lives and they change the world. Just like the light 
always, always overcomes the darkness. If you've noticed, the Easter candle was moved today. Father Bob thankfully has a little cart to put it on wheels to move it because it's pretty heavy. But this candle represents something. And it's almost like a physics principle. Light beats darkness. And this year, we didn't have the Easter Vigil like we normally do because of COVID. Hopefully, by April, we'll be able to have an Easter Vigil. God, God help us. But if you recall the Easter Vigil, it starts with a big fire outside. And from that massive fire, we light one candle. Now, I will tell you, of the things I've been able to do as a deacon, the, one of the greatest privileges is to carry this candle at the Easter Vigil. And I get to see what happens when one solitary candle is brought into this pitch dark church. The one candle cuts through the darkness. One candle. And then from that one candle, it's shared. And everybody starts to light their candles. And before you know it, the whole church is illuminated. So it is with one candle. It is with you and it is with me. The divine spark that's inside of us, the light of Christ is there. Let us nourish it. Let us feed it today with the Eucharist. And then let us share it. Because I'll tell you what, St. Matt's Parish needs your gifts. Green Bay needs your gifts. Our country needs your gifts. The world needs your gifts. The world needs Jesus Christ. And you have the opportunity to bring Jesus to the world every single day. So at this point, we are going to move into our breakout groups. And again, the questions that we're talking about is basically, what did you hear in the gospel? What did you hear in the homily that you can apply to your life, apply to your faith life? Okay, so we'll see you in a bit, back in about seven or eight minutes. Wow, look at this special group I have. I didn't even have to pay for this group. Wow. Well, you say that to all the groups, Mike. I actually do, Ann. I know you do. I got you <laughs> down. But it's always Hi, true. Julie. It's Hi, always true. <laughs> I was just thinking the same Hello. thing. Hello. How are you, sweetheart? Good. That's good. Brian, I think I saw you and Lizzie um, outside of St. John's a week ago. All right. Yes? Sorry, I'm taking air time. Sorry, I just want to catch up here a little bit. Take your mute off, Brian. We're all family yeah. here. We <laughs> were outside St. John's and uh, did a quick Marco Polo video to my mom right, right outside the uh, church as we went in. Oh, I knew we spotted you because Ari and I were stopping there to drop off some stuff. And I said, hey, I think we know them. And you were going your own way, so we didn't get a chance to chat. But we saw you. It's like, where's Waldo? <laughs> Hi, Wick Lashes. So we, we, only have, we only have six, seven minutes left. So um, my question, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with Claire and Lizzie and put them on the spot. No, don't get scared. Just give me one thing you heard um, Deacon Bob say in his homily. Anything. That we're made to share our accounts with the world. Wonderful. We're, 
We're made to share our talents with the world. Talked a lot about that. How about you, Claire? Um, one thing that I heard is that we hide our talents because we're afraid of success. And we don't want to share it because we don't know if we succeed, whether our friends will reject us or our family will reject us for embracing our gifts. Okay. That's kind of a different way of thinking about it, isn't it? That, that we might be afraid of being good. <laughs> um, I, I always thought that was an interesting uh, thought. <laughs> Hi there, Nessa. Hi. Hello. <laughs> she's, she's trying to give her two cents worth, worth too. Ari, what'd you hear? Okay, so I heard the part about when they, um, when people are like hiding their talents, and that reminded me when I was a little girl and I was in the back of my grandma's car. And I used to sing this little light of mine. Okay. Nice. He talked a lot about light too, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. I put it under a bushel. There's more to that story. I would sing this little light of mine. I'm gonna shut and she would say, I'd say, put it under a bushel, and she'd say, No, I'm gonna let it shine. <laughs> she doesn't tell a story of the same exuberance. It was a good story. <laughs> Come on, grandma. <laughs> Gotta get all the background. You got her to talk. Oh, that's one for you. <laughs> How about that Wicklodge household? What was heard there? We are children of the light. Children of the light, okay. Mm -hmm. That could make, be a good uh, bumper sticker or poster, huh? Yeah. Is that Michael back there? Yes. Hello. Michael, were you in there for the homily? I was not. Oh, I'm come on. Sorry, I was making some tea. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, children of the light, um, sharing our gifts, um, not being afraid to show our talents. Um, anything else that we heard? What about Mommy Olivia? Um, <laughs> she's being shy. <laughs> she's hiding her gifts. Um, yeah, good point. Um, <laughs> I guess that um, we need to share what we've been given and the world needs it. Okay. Something along those lines that I heard and I've been hearing since I was a kid. And it went like this. Um, my dad used to believe firmly and always, always seeing to it that if you think something nice of someone or that you feel that they need to have a pat on the back, you should always do it. And if you don't, you're resisting the nudge of the Holy Spirit. And he said, it never costs you anything to just say something nice. And I'm losing a little bit talking about him, but he always made it clear to us that that was a um, completely free gift that God gave us. And sometimes it takes a little effort and a little courage to say it. And there's still times in this point in my life where I draw back a little bit and I remember my dad and I make myself talk to people that I maybe shouldn't, but it just is a lesson I always learned and will never forget. So... It's that same idea that you've got something to give, give it up. It's not yours anyway. God gave it to you. I would say that you took them. that to heart, Anne. I tried. <laughs> I can't resist it, really. It's, it's, it's become such a big part of what I believe we need to do, but nobody can say it quite like Father Bob or... Deacon Bob or you, Mike, but um, we all do have our own gifts, and it's it's very evident when you just take a minute to look at people's presence in your life. So, there, I'm done now. I won't talk anymore. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's one of the wonderful thing about being part of groups like this 
is that we can find the encouragement to do that, to oh. let our light shine, um, oh. to, to recognize that we have that, that God-given divine spark in us and that the world needs that spark, that the world needs that light, you know, that, that um, and it's in a, in a way selfish for us to not, um, to not let that shine. Um, when he talked about the, the Easter candle um, and how that, that candle lights up the whole church. Um, for anyone who's been at Easter Vigil, I think that was, that's a powerful image um, every year, you know, that it doesn't take much light to make a difference. And if, if, if you have one light and it's shared with somebody, then it's two lights and the light just keeps growing and growing and growing. I mean, he said it pretty powerfully that darkness cannot overcome the light. And it doesn't have to be um, necessarily just physical light. Light can come in different ways. Um, a smile, a kind word, um, someone doing something um, nice for you, you doing something nice for others. All of those are different versions of light. applies to all ages. We're all still learning that too, Lizzie. <laughs> Brian, what you got for us? The, uh, the end of the liturgical year, it's like these, these readings are very powerful. Um, and there's times that it's like, yes, I focus on the message, but then there's like, um, someone's being thrown out in the darkness. And it's like, part of me is like, well, that's not Christian. But then it's like, <laughs> you're a disciple of Christ, and you have to or follow his example, and you should be ready and prepared and sharing. Um, if there's consequences if you don't. All right, we are being summoned back to the main room. So thanks so much for all your sharing. You guys were great. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Welcome back, everybody. I think we're all still, still on our way back. Um, at this point, I am going to um, turn things over to Miss Patty, wherever you are, as soon as she gets back. I'm here. All right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. So I have a quest for you if you don't have it right next to next you. Um, everybody, everybody received a white package. If you don't have it next to you, go and get it. You have like two seconds, go. And now that everybody has it, if you haven't unwrapped it yet, ta -da! unwrap it. <laughs> yes, everybody has their little jars. Well, first of all, I want to tell you that Meg had the amazing feat of making 70 of these things for everyone, which is amazing. And uh, so thanks, Meg. Um, but so the instructions are you need a Sharpie or two or three, whatever you want. I think darker colors work a lot better than uh, lighter colors. And what we are going to do is you grab your Sharpie and write on the outside. Um, if you, the idea is that we are going to write what we are thankful for. It can be a phrase, it can be a word, it can be a drawing, if little kids want to participate. It can be a point or something if baby wants to draw on it. So go ahead and we're gonna um, give you time to do it. Okay?
Mike, if you're talking, you need to unmute yourself. There you go. Oh, gone it. That's the second or third time I've done that today. <laughs> All right. Well, um, <laughs> I was inviting Kat to share anything more on the jar um, craft um, that, that she would like to. Oh, I think we, I think we did it all. But uh, so a couple of things was one is if you do have a candle, Patty showed uh, her her multicolored candle because she is that cool. Um, but probably the ones that that aren't really a light, the battery operated ones. But popping a light in there is a great way to demonstrate uh, the the homily. Um, so if you think about it, all of our blessings and all of our talents on the jar, you can see the spark of light um, kind of shine through. Uh, we were looking at the uh, the Fisher home it has a candle and a Christmas tree in the backdrop. And that was a, just a nice kind of imagery of, of how just one little spark of light can make a big difference. Um, and then it's also just a nice reminder if you want to have these at, at your Thanksgiving dinner. Um, it might look very different this year. Uh, we've talked a little bit in our group and the middle schoolers, we've talked about it. But it's really hard to remember what we're thankful for this year. Um, but it's, you know, hopefully at Thanksgiving or sometime in the next week, it, just to take a moment and let all of the junk go that's related to COVID and just kind of focus on your jar and all the things that you're thankful for this year. I'm not even going to try to add on to that. So wonderful. Thank you. So I wanted to close with our, um, a prayer. So if you could um, read along with me. Lord, I am grateful for all your blessings. Help me to use your gifts of love and compassion to rebuild people's lives. Amen. So um, what I'd like to do is uh, invite the team members um, to, to share anything, any announcements or anything that, that they have, then I have a quick announcement. And then uh, we'll wrap things up for everybody, except for our second and third graders who we're going to ask to stay on for a couple more minutes. So, um, Kat, do you want to talk about the food drive first? Yeah, so we have an opportunity, you know, trying to think about how to, to go make a difference while we're all so, so uh, you know, in our own homes has been a little difficult. Um, but, but one of our calls might be to, to help uh, our neighbors in need in terms of a food drive. So just because there's COVID doesn't mean that people still don't need food at this time of year. Um, our own Deacon Bob works at, at Paul's Pantry and was on the news today. They were, they were doing some, uh, doing a food drive and, and some focus on that. And so we, we thought what better way to, to connect ourselves. So the ask is, is if you could donate uh, food. We're going to have a food drive within the parish. Uh, we have big, huge boxes and barrels that will be available. And so if you wanted to stop by, even if going to church you're still not comfortable with, um, that's fine. But if you wanted to drop by a, uh, some canned goods or non-perishable food items, uh, either you know, before or right after any of the three masses, um, or heck, even while mass is going on, if you're going to watch it later, uh, that would be very much appreciated. And then we'll have a, a small group to take that over then on Monday. Um, you know, so if you think about it, my, my rule of thumb for a food drive is if you like it, others would like it. If you probably wouldn't eat it, mm, let's maybe think of not donating that. Um, and just a super quick check before you do donate to make sure that there's not uh, an expired date. Because um, every now and then I know I've grabbed something from the, the cupboard and like, oh shoot, that was, you know, 1983 or, or something horrible like that. So, um, <laughs> but, but just making sure it's something that you like, uh, non-perishable, uh, so grab from your pantry, not from your refrigerator, and drop it by the parish. Um, if you have some donations and you're not comfortable coming out, uh, feel free to email me and, and we'll stop by and pick it up for you. Um, it's just a nice way to, to help our neighbors in need and, and still stay safe. Um, and then just a shout out to the middle schoolers. Uh, I'll send an email um, out to your folks to, to relay, but um, we're, we'll coordinate and start thinking about how we're going to do our Christmas pageant uh, safely and online because it wouldn't be Christmas without somebody dressing up like, you know, 
Mary and or Joseph and or we still need the Christmas lobster. So we'll, we'll be, uh, I'll send you out an email and we'll figure that out. Thanks everyone. Jamie and Sue. Or Sue and Jamie. Could be either. Just reminding our little ones of our hand. Remember when you pray, your thumb, people closest to you, the pointer finger, those who point the way, teachers, parents, those who guide you. Tall finger, those who are the leaders. Pray for the weakest, your finger, your ring finger. And lastly, have a prayer for yourself before you go to bed each night. We won't do um, any announcements for the second and third graders or first graders or kindergartners because um, our, our littles, our second and third graders will have a, a little bit of time after this. Um, one um, last announcement about things coming up. Our next, um, our next session actually will be in this season, the season of Advent. So we're going to leave ordinary time and we're going to go into candle time, okay? Um, we, we have, um, I have a number of, of sets of candles. If, if you have a, a, a wreath uh, that, that needs candles, um, so we have some of those. We also have some of the, the styrofoam bases that we typically use on our Advent family nights. So if you do not have an Advent wreath for your house, okay, um, we'd like to supply you with things to make an Advent wreath for yourself. Um, if you have an Advent wreath that has expired candles, I mean, candles last for years and years and years, but if, if, you, uh, if, you're, if you're down to here on your candles and there's no way you can make it through the season, um, let us know and we'll include that in your next drop pack. Okay, um, and likewise, if, if you don't, if you have not, no idea what I'm talking about, about an Advent wreath, shoot me an email and, and we'll fill you in because that's going to be part of our next session. All right, our next session on December 2nd is going to be an Advent night and we're going to do a, a number of, of things that we typically do to celebrate the season, including lighting our home Advent wreaths together as part of that um, that night. Our other um, December session is actually December 9th. So you got two quick hitters in December and then the rest of the month off. That schedule was uh, was made um, with the understanding that we'd all be in, in school and, and have all those uh, year-end kind of festivities going on. So it was meant to kind of create us some space closer to Christmas. Um, there's no reason to change the schedule now. Um, so December 9th will be um, a virtual Christmas carol uh, festival uh, or a Christmas festival. Let's not call it a Christmas carol festival, but we have all kinds of plans for you um, that, that we'll share in, in the next couple of weeks. So um, be ready to be creative and, um, and to lose your shyness. Okay, um, so with that, um, we are done and we can say um, goodbye to everybody other than for those of you with second and third graders. So everybody else, thanks for, for coming. Um, be blessed, stay safe, um, wear a mask, uh, wash your hands, uh, keep those around you who, uh, who are vulnerable safe. Uh, because we all have to get through this together. Thanks. Second and third graders, stay on, please. Thank you. Adios. Thank you. Adios. Bye. Bye. And then we were here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hi, second and third graders. How are we? Good. <laughs> Did you guys play in the snow? 
de coibição. Yep. Yep, did it. Yes, that's cool. <laughs> no. No. My all my kids went to the snow, but only one went to pretend to do a snowman, which was sort of unsuccessful, but sort of. <laughs> no. Do you guys, um, oh, I'm going to let me start say hi first. Oh, hi. <laughs> Go ahead, you could start. <laughs> Do you guys remember last time we were talking about traditions? And I told you about the um, Day of the Dead altar and stuff like that, that I have a tradition of making in my family? Yes. And then we said, well, now you guys have homework and think of the traditions that you guys have in your families. So now is the time when you get to tell us about those traditions. Who wants to start? I could start, Miss Patty. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I have a pickle ornament. And every year on our tree, I hang this pickle ornament and I hide it. I get to do this because that means everybody else, that's my husband and my brother and my son, they have to try and find this pickle ornament. It's green, it hides in the tree really well. And so they have a contest to see who can find it because there is a fabulous gift that goes with the pickle if you find the pickle first. And my brother and my son are sitting there first thing Christmas morning, I can see them. They're looking through that tree while we're trying to open gifts to make sure they get that pickle gift first. It's really not the greatest gift, but this actually is a German tradition, but a friend of mine introduced me to it, and it has added a lot of fun to our Christmases. So that's a tradition we do at our house on Christmas. That sounds like fun. Cool, anybody? Okay, I see a hand. Um, Adam? Remind me of your name. That's Adam. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I, every year, we always get this little ornament and we always put our names on it. As a family. Yeah, for an ornament. Yes. And then somebody paints it and it says like, this year we put birds in like a tree and we put um, a bone because we have a dog named Cooper and we put Cooper on it and then we put my mom and dad in the middle, me and Alexa in the corner and Anna in the corner. So it was a really it's our favorite tradition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Who's next? Go right. ahead. I get um only for my Etsy every Christmas. You do. Nice. Who's next? Come on, Reese. <laughs> Go ahead. I am Christmas Eve. I FaceTime my fam family from Canada and then we sing the Go Day of Christmas. And everyone has a different part. So everybody has the same part every year. So it's pretty funny to hear how my dad sings Seven Swans of Swimming with his baritone voice. <laughs> Fun. Next. Fun? Go ahead, beautiful. You. Um, our tradition is uh, our family cuts down a tree every year, and we also go to my grandma's for Thanksgiving. Nice. Go ahead. I I am Ben, and every year, me and my brother get a Christmas a Christmas ornament and it represents something something that we like that was important that year well something that was important that Ooh. year oh that's nice, that's nice. Mm -hmm. how about you miss patty well um hmm. oh that's a cool ornament i like it um we we have changed so many things, but um, one 
tradition that the Christmas tradition that I like. Every year we will I will make a uh, boots for everybody uh, to hang under the tree. So we we started having like tons of boots for everybody, and then we stopped because there were too many of them, and I don't throw things away. <laughs> So we just chose our favorite one and kept using it, but that was a fun tradition that we kind of stopped having. <laughs> and we're missing uh, the kid tricks. I, I know the kids are not there, but do you guys want to share a tradition? <laughs> um, every year for Christmas, me and my sisters and my mom and a couple of my aunts get together and we like do a crazy cookie baking day. Like, tons and tons of Christmas cookies, all different sorts. We've been doing that for years. So that's one of our traditions. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> cool. That's so cool. Well, and I just wanted to remind you guys, um, just like I said, my tradition kind of changed over the time. One of the things that we we do while we start learning about other things and other people and things like that is sometimes you change your traditions. Like Miss Terry said, her tradition was told to her by a friend. She didn't have it before, but she liked it so much that now it's a tradition of hers. So sometimes it's fun to just ask around and maybe if you find an idea that you like a lot, maybe you can like adopt it and add it to your family traditions or maybe one day you switch it up and sorry one year you switch it up and do something different mm -hmm. <clears throat> looks like you're frozen there hey mike <laughs> patty froze <laughs> Yeah. We have one more thing we're going to talk about. Okay. Um, in your next packet, second and third graders, you're going to receive a blank sheet of paper and some stickers with the nativity scenes on them. And you can take this and turn it into a beautiful stationery. You can put a few on there. You can put them all on there. But you're going to make your own stationery. And then you're going to have an envelope with one of the other classmates that would have been in your class if we had been in GOF with their name and their address on that and a stamp. And we would like you to write them a letter, tell them about yourself, um, what school you would have gone to or what, what school you're at, what grade you're in, maybe some of the things you like to do. And they would love to get a letter from you. And the best part is, you will get a letter from one of them telling about them. So this will be in your next drop-off packet, and I'll have the instructions written on it again for your parents to see. And they can help you with getting it together and getting it into the mail for another one of your classmates. So you'll get to meet somebody through a Christmas letter, and you'll get one too. Did we lose Patty? <laughs> No, I'm back. back. I'm okay. Sorry. All right. Anyone sorry. <laughs> Did you want to finish up about the traditions? Well, no. I think it was almost there. I okay. Yeah, we were good. <laughs> we had this happen so many times. We freeze. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. But yeah, <laughs> I'm glad that you guys are still here. And um, yes, I think uh, it will be so much fun to see a letter, you know, the letter thing. Just like that, we did it before. Now you guys get to connect with your own friends. And uh, yeah, that's awesome. In, when I was a, a smaller, we didn't have internet like now. And writing was one of the things that we did. And it was very, very fun. Maybe you can invent a secret language too, or something like that. That's something that we did when we were kids. I find I've been writing letters more to some of my friends just because I'm tired of just being on the internet and because things will happen like they'll freeze and some of you kids are on that all day long. So this might be a good thing for you to do. Something different. Is there anybody out there that wants to say something before we let you the rest? <laughs> Braden looks like he's ready to sleep. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. I What's see it? a hand. Do you? Okay. Is that Adam? You're muted, Shana. <laughs> You're muted. <laughs> we can't. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Abby killed it. Abby first has to be where Legos and Beyonders. Talk to Abby Kinders. Legos and Abby Kinders. Yes, I always have. Advent calendars. We always have the advent calendars, the countdown. Oh, good. Well, you guys are kind of ahead of us because we'll have an advent calendar. Don't worry. We're, That's coming we're next working time, on too. <laughs> they might have two then if they always have one. But we will be sending those. Yep. Yeah. I always had an advent calendar when I grew up. Mine had lots of glitter on it, though. <laughs> no glitter this time. <laughs> Anyone else? It's time to say goodbye. Well, I want to just remind my, yeah, I just want to remind my uh, third graders, well, everybody, um, keep looking to your uh, little papery things that we gave you, the good news and the uh, seeds. Uh, it has tons of activity that you guys, you know, if you feel one weekend or one day that you want to do some papering, look through them. And there is tons of things that you can do, share with your family and things like that. And keep working at your holy moments. That's awesome to realize that we, like we had the snow after a super hot, hot week and that was awesome. And the snow was super big flurry like fluffy snows that I like that's awesome when you get to stop and see all the blessings that we get even when they're cold and frozen <laughs> Miss Terry? That's I would say yes remember to look through those old sheets we'll be getting new ones coming up for the next month They'll be in your packets next time too. So take care. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Good night, everybody. Bye. Thank you, bye. Good night. Bye.